For years, the FAA has required home builders of experimental amateur built aircraft to go through a 40 hour fly off in phase one or 25 hours if you have a certified engine and propeller combination. And a 40 hour fly off just sounds kind of like you're going through the motions, right? I mean, obviously the first few hours are gonna be exciting, first 15, 20 hours even. But those last few hours, sounds like you're just watching the clock burning off hours. Well, the EAA thought the same thing. And after years, of convincing the FAA, it's finally changed to a task-based flight test program in lieu of the 40 hours. You can still do the 40 hours. We'll get into all the details. And it is here just in time. It came out last week and I couldn't be more excited because I am in final assembly of my bush plane and I need all the help I can get in getting it ready for Oshkosh 2023. I'm hoping that I can leverage my experience as an F-15 operational test pilot to go through methodically the flight test program, but not necessarily just watch the clock, just get everything done and go. Hey, it's Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about how I came across this information. We're gonna talk about the actual information so you believe me in what I'm talking about. And then I'm gonna give you a bunch of resources so you can do your own research as well as build your own flight test program. So a lot of you know that I fly for a legacy airline 737 a base out of seattle and i had always heard of this captain that i needed to fly with or get in touch with named ryan well out of the 2000 seattle based captains we finally got paired together and i was really excited because i was going to pick his brain and and we did it, we had a great time we were eight days apart we got along uh, really well he's involved with a lot of other youtubers he has a company called flight flicks this is not sponsored he outfits general aviation uh, pilots with camera rigs and mounts for their airplanes and i'd always heard of this company and so this was obviously a dream come true to be paired with him and just be able to pick his brain uh, for a few days well he's also starting up a company called pro rig more on that in the future the only thing we didn't get along with was the fact that it was like 15 below zero and he is from hardy minnesota stock he still lives in in minneapolis area and uh and was making fun of me for wearing long johns it was 15 degrees below zero in bozeman and jackson hole and fairbanks i'm ready to be home fairbanks was the warmest place after we got over that he on a layover he got an email, turns out he's an AMPIA as well, so he got an email from the FAA advising him of this new AC, Advisory Circular 9089 Charlie. He said, hey, this might be a good video for you to talk about, so thanks, Ryan. <clears throat> and in fact, it was better than he even thought. I said, hey, I wonder if this is this new task-based flight test program that the EAA has been talking with the FAA about. He goes, well... Uh, ACs, advisory circulars don't really set policy, they're more of clarification, so I kind of got bummed, but I started reading through the material anyway, and I found out that it actually was. Advisory circular 90-89 Charlie replaces Bravo, stipulates that you can, in lieu of 40 hours, develop a flight test program. So. I'm gonna get into some of the details reading off my iPad, but that's kind of how I came across it. And I'm really hopeful that this might actually be the key that will allow me to make it to Oshkosh Air Venture 2023. Fingers crossed, it is gonna be a Herculean effort. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. I, do, I am gonna go regardless if I don't bring, um, we also named the airplane on the flight deck. I'm not gonna say it now. I wanna vet it a little bit more, a little bit better. But that was so exciting because I've been struggling with the name of this aircraft. I should open it up to you guys, but I digress. If I don't make bring this aircraft out to Oshkosh, I will find another way out, whether it's the Bonanza or Airlines, and I do have a place to stay thanks to him also. It was such a productive trip. So Advisory Circular 90-89 Charlie, I love it. They start with some of the reasons why they're changing this, which I'm sure the EAA uh, presented the FAA with this information and started the ball rolling is the fact that there's nothing magic about 40 hours. Okay, in fact, there is a magic number and that's eight, eight hours of flight test. They see a dramatic drop off of the amount of incidents and accidents after eight hours. Okay, why don't they make flight tests eight hours? Well, there's clearly a lot you gotta get done you can't do in, in eight hours, but they're not gonna put a time on it. Another point that the EAA made when they were going to the FAA is you know, the pilots of aircraft like this, these kits that are made by well-known producers, they have decent safety records, good safety records. There's a lot of them flying. There's a lot of data already out there. So when Steve goes to fly his Rans S21, he's not the first guy trying to fly an untested design. This is a tested design. It's a fairly new design. I am not Chuck Yeager here trying to break the sound barrier. 
there's other of these flying. I am not truly an experimental test pilot in doing this. I am more of a verification pilot, right? Something that's pretty important to discuss also up front is you don't need to get FAA approval, FISDO or MIDO approval of your actual flight test plan. You go ahead and execute it. The approval comes in the form of your experimental certificate and corresponding operating limitations, okay? The words are, in order to utilize a task-based flight test plan, the operating limitations for this aircraft need to be referenced to this advisory circular. And there's some verbiage in there that you can actually use on your application and whatnot. The task-based flight testing criteria, there are three overall considerations for a successful task-based flight test plan. Aircraft preparation, flight testing, and development of an aircraft specific AOH. It's an AOH, it's a POH, right? Pilot Operating Handbook has become Aircraft Operating Handbook. What I've kind of gleaned is that during the 40 hour fly off in the past, people have gotten their VX or VY, their stall speeds, the, the you know, the, the, the basics of, of the performance data. They may have compiled some operational data, some procedural data but they may not have flushed out a full POH. Maybe some emergency procedures that maybe you haven't thought about, ditching, et cetera, like shutting off fuel tanks, I don't know. But I will give you some resources that will walk you through all that stuff, okay? So that's that's another part of the, the reason why this was effective with the FAA is, is they said, hey, I'll tell you what, if you relinquish your 40 hour requirement, we'll make these guys and gals create a POH, an AOH, okay? That's gonna be hard for me to say. I'm just gonna say POH. Um, and one also good benefit of having a PAH is safety for the next person, right? So the resale, that's a, a huge growing segment of the experimental market is people buying the long easies from yesteryear, the Lancers from yesteryears, the, the RVs, the Ranses from yesteryear. And they don't have a POH to go along with that. So that's a significant safety risk. Do you agree? Okay, so what are the elements of a flight test? They're actually listed in the advisory circ circular. There are 11 of them, and of course they're broken down into a bunch more detail here. I'll just list the 11 main elements that you need to have. So first off, a complete detailed flight test plan, aircraft fuel system, functional test procedures, fuel flow, and unusable fuel tests, a fuel system functional test report, Provisions for the use of electronic data recordings from electronic flight displays, engine instruments, or other recording devices. I think that might be for accident reconstruction, just a guess, being a safety guy. The method that will be used for record keeping, the description of the cockpit layout, the weight and balance information and calculations, the aircraft inspection checklist, engine run and taxi tests, the following flight tests, there's a bunch of those, and then lastly, flight test cards, okay? So there's a bunch of those. Okay, so sounds reasonable. There's nothing out of the ordinary that you wouldn't expect here. They even give you a sample flight test card, okay? They do want you to have operating limitations. You're gonna be restricted during your flight test phase geographically, as well as who you can carry uh, on board. Obviously, it's gonna be nobody unless they're um, required for you know, operation of the aircraft or flight test. Exit criteria, so aircraft maintenance record documentation of completed requirements based on the phase one flight test. So keep that maintenance record, make any entries, attesting to the flight test, test has been completed. And then of course you're gonna meet with uh, the individual who's gonna sign you off. I mean, you're gonna certify certain things, what your VSO, VX, VY, weight, CG, and the location at which they were attained and sign your life away. Um, there's a different Thing that you're going to sign off if you do the 40 hours right so you're seeing there are two avenues you can still do the 40 hours or you can do this task-based flight test this is all in section two of the advisory circular okay into the resources what do we have available to us well okay the eaa has had this for years. This is the EAA flight test manual. I bring it on trips with me and I, I, I read it uh, when, I'm, when I don't have anything better to do. Um, but additionally, they have flight test cards already out for you, okay? Clearly it's, you know, they don't know I'm flying a RANS S21. They don't know if it has retractable gear or constant speed prop or electronic flaps or, or whatnot. So you gotta tailor it to yourself. Okay, the version I have is 1.0 from October 2018. I just checked their website. The newest version is 1.1 from 2021. I'm hoping that they're gonna put some more resources out on the website. I haven't seen any news about this or 
press releases or anything. This is a huge win. I would imagine that the EAA is going to get after that pretty quick. They're welcome to use this video to get the, the word out. But on the resources side, I would really hope that uh, potentially they've got spreadsheets out there that, that you'd feel free to use. Um, I will share to the best of my ability and the best I'm legally protected to share kind of whatever data I come up with uh, processes. And obviously I'm going to be filming my entire flight test process. So make sure you're subscribed, make sure you follow along. This thing is getting really, really, really close in flight test. I don't know when exactly it's going to start. I got to hang a motor. So lots of work yet to do, but uh, I really am excited that you're watching this video. I'm really excited and thank you to the EAA and also to the FAA for making this happen. I think this is a big step forward. I think that there's going to be opponents to this. I, I hope that people don't you know, take this as an opportunity to skimp. I think this has an opportunity to add safety rather than take it away. So let's do the right thing. Let's do a good thorough flight test. And until next time, it's Steve. It's